everybody. Welcome to Hallmarkies Podcast. And we are here to talk about the latest two episodes of Ride. We we're almost finished the first season. We may be almost finished the series. We're going to talk about that. But, but, uh, but uh, we've been enjoying it and enjoying covering it. And I'm film critic Rachel Wagner and Terry's here. Hello. And we don't have Jenny with us today as she is traveling uh, but she will be back for our recap of the finale and uh, we will enjoy having her there. And uh, yeah, so we're excited to talk about these, the penultimate episodes <laughs> of Ride. Yep. Yeah. And I saw on Twitter, you had some strong feelings. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Uh, all right. Well, let's dive in. Let's talk about episode eight. And uh, this is Speak Now or Forever Hold Your Peace. Romance is in the air when the McMurrays prepare to host a Booker family wedding at the ranch. Everyone has a role to play in preparing for the big day. So overall, what did you think of this episode? I like this episode. I thought it was a lot of fun until all the couple drama, Mm -hmm. which I felt was manufactured. Yeah, I can see that. And I was like, oh. But I really enjoyed it because it it almost felt like it really had nothing to do with anything that was going on. It just felt like a fun throwaway episode, so to speak. But in the end, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I I feel like sometimes the makers of shows don't realize how their own characters are going to come across to the viewers. They think, oh, they're going to, they're not going to want say cash and valeria to be together they're going to want missy and missy and uh and cash to be together when i think pretty much most everybody's like oh we like val and valeria and cash if they Uh, want us to root for missy and cash yeah that's nice yeah yeah they have to show us why right and at least for me i haven't seen it the only thing I, i mean why because cash has been in love with her all this time and that's his reward. They don't, they show nothing besides that. I don't even know if Missy, I'm a bit confused if Missy has ever thought that cash was an option because yeah, she, it's, it's really seems, interesting. Yeah. I'm sorry. Because no, no, it's really interesting because in the premiere, in the pilot, it seemed like she was invested in the almost kisses then. And, and that was something that really threw me. I was like, shouldn't be building to that. Yeah. Uh, and and then there's just been nothing else no. uh, since then to show her being interested in cash at all. Not at all. He seems like he's been very timid to try to tell her that he likes her or has strong feelings yeah. for her. Even in the flashbacks, like early on in the season, when we had that flashback where he was going to give her the box, the present, and he was just about to, you know, tell his feelings when Austin pulled up. So I wonder if Missy might have liked him, but Austin beat him to the punch. And so she went with Austin because I don't see anything between them where we should root for them. Yeah, it really is not a successful love triangle thing. Like if anything, I felt more between Gus and Missy. And then the fact that he just kind of was like, well, my family doesn't like you. So bye. (laughs) That was so annoying. And I was like, they had to make him, they had to make that breakup scene or potential because we don't know if the show is going to get a second season or he'll come back. But they had to make him so annoying so the audience could be mad at him. Yeah. Like, where does he go off yelling at her? It makes sense. Yeah. Like, she has commitment issues. How does she have commitment issues? Her husband died. Yeah. It's so weird. And it just felt so false. Well, yeah. And, and she was like willing to kiss him and like, wasn't that annoyed that his mom said he, she was, uh, his, her boyfriend, you know, that they were boyfriend, girlfriend. And, and so I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is going simply. This is cute. And yeah, then she, it just devolved by the end so, of the episode. I know. I have a feeling like they didn't know. I mean, this is all guessing on my part, but like, they didn't know how to because they wrote him so good to an extent yeah. how to write him off. And then you get this, you get like a minute for his backstory. He was left at the altar. And then that makes him so mad at Missy because his sister did it. Uh-huh. 
it just made no sense. And it was like, he has to be annoying. So the audience doesn't like him. So we could realize that Missy belongs with cash, but I don't know why, because they don't show us why. Well, you see that all the time in shows, like for example, yeah. the, in how I met your mother, they had their heart set. They filmed the, uh, the ending with the kids early on season two, I think. And they had their heart set on Ted and Robin. Uh, and, but as they evolved, because the show ended up going way longer than they expected, they ended up developing Robin and Barney. And that couple actually makes way more sense and had a arguably better chemistry. Uh, but they were so like tied to their original idea that they didn't listen to what the audience actually wanted. And I mean, in this case, it's different because your first season, so how could they know what the audience wanted? But in general, I think oftentimes writers for shows will be surprised by the reaction that yeah that audience that an audience has to pairings. I wish they would have shown Missy perhaps more conflicted when she was talking yeah. with Val about them flirting or them potentially having something. It was just she was so nonchalant about yeah, it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, yeah, because Val says I a part of me thought you'd end up with cash. Right. And she's well, just because kind of like, what? He's, you know, who knows how long he's been longing for her, but why? Why does he long for her? That's yeah, is it another just because thing. she's yeah. beautiful. What is it about what is it Missy? that makes him want to have more with her? Mm-hmm. I don't know. They don't show it. Then there's not enough time to show it. Well, and also it, it annoyed me that he then goes and and kisses Valeria and then says that, oh, well, this is just we can still be friends. Like what? Boy, what are you doing? Val went went through a roller coaster this episode. Yeah, really did. Well, both of the episodes she really did, and she. <laughs> I, it's strange because at first I didn't really get into her character, but Val and Tuff are like my favorites. Mm-hmm. And uh, you yeah, know, poor Val, she's like me too. She's playing it up like you know, it, well, this spark didn't work out, but we could still be friends because she realized through the kiss. That he is never going to like anybody but Missy. I, I don't, I just, I which, don't know. Which is just his, his choices are just confusing. Yeah. Because why know. did he kiss her at all? Like, he seemed like he was kind of into it. And I think he, I, I think know. he wants to move on. He's so hesitant to do anything with Missy. Yeah. Or at least tell her how he feels, you know, and there was in the pilot, it looked like there was something more, but it's never been fulfilled throughout the mm-hmm. season. She feels so indifferent to him. Yeah, I agree. And in a I... sense, almost indifferent to her husband as well in how she plays it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And so we also so we also have Daniel wants to call the stadium Booker Stadium. <laughs> Bookers are the worst, that whole family the worst yeah they are the worst but i don't feel like they're the worst in that entertaining of ways you know what i mean like yeah they're, yeah they're just kind of jerks like they're not like that they're rich people. kind of campy you know over, over the top kind of yeah. a little like i kind of wish they had like a little bit more like villainous that's one thing that i i think when calls the heart does pretty well is that you know, whenever they have like a banker or a train guy or whatever, like he's always (laughs) just like the worst. Well, you see, but see, he is a man of business and in true Hallmark fashion, you know, a man of business is always the bad guy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or, or I just wish he was, you know, he doesn't spend no time with, I'm sorry. He doesn't spend any time with his family. So he's double the Hallmark true cliche of the man of business being the bad guy. (laughs) But I wish he was more deliciously evil. Oh, I know. Bad guy. You know what I mean? I know. <laughs> he's just kind of like, oh, he just he could... wants everything being named after him. <laughs> Which I understand because whenever we get stadiums down here uh, built, they're always named for whatever corporation shells out the most money. So in a sense, that makes sense yeah. to me anyway. Well, like, I think that this guy Tucker is more of an enjoyably evil guy. 
he's right so bad like oh my he was perfect I was like where have you been all season (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) so he brings this restored car to the wedding and it is absolutely beautiful it was (laughs) and the level of disrespect he was giving Gus and everybody I was like chef's kiss this guy he knows his assignment yeah he did that's a good way to describe it (laughs) (laughs) yes and uh like the the back and forth between him and tough was really well done yeah I I agree with you I think that Jake Foy is tough and uh Sarah Garcia's Valeria and Tyler Jacob Moore's guest the that's the standouts of this they show are. totally There's three for sure uh so yes and uh and then you just are completely just turned off and and suspect of this Tucker guy from Absolutely. the very beginning and uh then uh then let's see so then there's Laura who's the sister that's going to be getting married and she keeps saying things like my daughter Sophie because she's Sophie's mom uh and my daughter loves him my we never get introduced to him the guy the groom did she love him though wasn't there an episode I might be misremembering this forgive me where I thought the daughter was conflicted about the relationship well I I can't remember but uh, but the, she does. She says that though. She thinks that her daughter loves okay the guy, and she says that she's like Sophie loves yeah. him, and hmm. my parents love him, and and you know, honest thing. And then finally, Missy's like, "Do you love him?" Like, what? <laughs> listen, you knew Missy was going to be trouble from that wedding for the wedding. The minute she spilled that coffee on that dress, yes. So it then was, they, yeah, they spill yeah. the coffee on the dress, and you feel just like the panic, and. That is I mean, I, everybody has to make their choices and I respect that, <laughs> but $35,000 for that dress is just, it's just, wow. That's a lot. I know that is a lot, but it's rich oh. people. It's almost because I have in my notes, it's so rich though, that this, that when Laura is there and she's looking at her makeup, I was like, you don't have a makeup artist or a hairstylist. You have yeah. all this money and they're not there. Well, that was also confusing. It's like, so it sounds like they pulled this wedding together very quickly. Yeah. But yet they still had like all of, they were still expecting everything to be, you know, as if they'd had two years to plan it. Right. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. It was so funny. I was like, but I did laugh though when um, Gus's mom saw Valeria and I wrote in my notes, I was like, ooh, rich people recognizing other rich people. <laughs> I was like, it's like the radar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it, it's like she smelled money almost. <laughs> yeah. Her name, the mom's name is Grace and she was a yes. little bit more like deliciously. Evil, she was kind of terrible yeah. uh but uh but yeah she recognizes valeria it's like do i know you from like volunteering a hospital yeah. or something like that I'm like oh i was like oh boy here we go <laughs> but i did i laughed and i was like yeah she's she's uh noticing the pedigree you know <laughs> yeah and then there's this whole scene between valeria and cash 
And Val and Valeria says, how long are we going to dance around this? And Cash says, I'm not dancing. And then they kiss. Yeah. And I thought that was, was a pretty good scene, but then I was frustrated <sighs> when it was just like done away with five seconds later. I knew the minute, first, this was not, they bring that dress to try to clean and fix the tear to the most dirtiest place. Yeah, you know, that's true. It's in ever. like a basement. Like, a, and I know this is where they, they, this is where they play poker. There's beer bottles everywhere. And I was like, this dress is going to get filthy. <laughs> and she's doing all this manual labor and sewing with a machine. And why and is I the sewing like, machine there? <laughs> I was like, wait, this dress got ripped. And I was like, yeah, like Chase with his man hands, like <laughs> rubbed too hard and ripped the lace. And I was like, whoa. But I knew after the kiss was done, just by the reaction, I was like, oh no, this couple is not going anywhere. Or at least it's stopping for this really? season. You know, I, I, I knew the kiss was just, pretty good. I, I liked the kiss, but it was Val's face, oh. the sort of reaction that cued me in. I was like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I felt disaster in my bones. I was so sad. Uh, it's such a bummer. And <laughs> such a bummer. Oh, yeah, but we also got. Uh, so tough calls julian his boyfriend which was cute oh they're that was so a cute scene. adorable and and he's like do you want to go <laughs> travel and and uh, stuff and then yes yes go yeah go <laughs> uh, and then cody tells isabel uh that he that she needs to figure out daniel's love language right and and I, that scene was hysterical was he's good. like yeah uh, my ex gave me a book i didn't understand it and you know isabel is like so confused over it and i was like money money is the love language <laughs> but anything listen i'm shipping that couple right there they were so they're so cute together uh yeah so they, they didn't have like, james, yeah. james tuper on and yes. they are just too cute together and it looks like it might go somewhere because, yeah. you know. Poor Hank. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, Hank seems in the next episode, like he's got options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's, so there's five love languages. So words of affirmation, physical touch, receiving gifts, quality time, and acts of service. I don't know which one of those Daniel is. We don't know. Probably. None. I don't think any. <laughs> Yeah, I just think money's his money. He's none of those acts of service. He probably hasn't. Maybe words of affirmation. Maybe I, I don't get, know. I don't know. That's got to be an awkward dinner between him and his wife when they're alone. There's nothing. Yeah, receiving gifts. He wants the stadium named after him. Maybe that's. I, he probably you, asks for a receipt when he gives a gift. He probably does. So, do you have a love language? which one Ooh, is... I don't know I think probably the acts of service you know uh, yeah I'm some combination of words of affirmation quality time absolutely yeah because I am a really? talker and I I like kind of working out I mean big surprise I'm not like podcasting a million times a day I'm a talker <laughs> but like I like kind of working out problems right with which is another important. person you know it's like yeah just important. let me just let me explain this let me let me talk it out and and then we uh kind of you know then I figure it out and I decide what I'm going to do and uh and that's always how it's been I've I've always been my whole life and and uh, I mean I think everybody is a little bit quality time yeah true I mean absolutely but <laughs> no I can't, I've never even thought about it really I've never even thought what my love language is I don't really give much thought to that <laughs> I, I mean, mean yeah I'm done. I'm not receiving gifts. I know that's the, and then physical touch. I'm not that oh, no. man for me. I, it, 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 that was a big thing about the pandemic that finally I was like, I miss <laughs> hugs. I miss touch. Cause I'm normally not that person, you know, normally mm. I, I, Oh, just, I'm not a, a hugger or anything. Just yeah, I'm not a hugger. And stuff. I had, uh, I don't know, he wasn't really a boyfriend, sort of kind of this fling when I was in school. Uh -huh. and he wanted to hold my hand when we were walking down the street and I was yeah. like why and he's like what do you mean why and I was like why yeah I think it's that would probably be more me but mm -hmm. uh but yeah I think I, I, it's my family's like that well at least my parents were like that but then again that was that's I don't know but you could tell I have been isolated a long time when I'm like I really need 
like human contact. <laughs> I know it is true. It is true that I, I received a hug from someone I hadn't seen in a long time. And I was like, this hug feels good. And yeah. I was never like that. But I do yeah. think when you get older, you want a little bit more company, the friendship and, and all that stuff. You want that. Um, yeah. I can't think of a word for it, but you just want that, that time with people. Yeah. yeah. To yeah. have a good time to hang out you know? Yes. And so then Isabel says, you are using to discuss this today, you know, you are using our name to attract investors. That is the money we bring to the table. That's the asset, the value that they bring to the table. And then he says, the McMurray name does come with a dollar sign, doesn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, the man of business. Uh, Yeah. twirling, Almost twirling that mustache. The the mustache is too small to twirl. (laughs) Uh, but I mean, any, any name that's part of a business like this is going to have value. That shouldn't be like a yeah. new concept to him. I don't know. I, I was like, I think I might be a little evil here, but I was like, I understand him. Mm-hmm. Like I understood his point of view. Also, it, it was like. So you think he should have, it should be Booker Stadium. If he's no. investing, if he's investing all this money, he should have it named after him. No, I don't think so. Uh, maybe they could do it like a a hyphen in it. I actually don't think so. I think it should go to who the town wants to support because that's just going to alienate the townspeople yeah. and stuff like that. So but I think- do understand his point of view in it, though. Mm. Booker hyphen McMurray. Well, Stadium. McMurray's got to come first, though. <laughs> McMurray's hyphen Booker Stadium. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they I, kind of made a compromise. It'd be okay. Yeah. It'd be okay. <laughs> <laughs> But like, I, I understood both points of view. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I because he is investing so much, but like, I don't really feel like a man like him would particularly care. I think he's about making the most money. And I think that he would be able to see that naming it McMurray Stadium would make the more money. And so I think that that's all he would really care about. True, but I think they needed uh, an element of drama to write, to end the story yeah. with him. Yeah, and they needed they needed something, and this was it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So then Missy gives Laura the jewelry box from that Austin had given her that was actually from Cash. And Cash's first, eyes are beating, you know. Yeah, that puppy dog eyes giving him, you know, like, dude, that was me, you know, like, oh, yeah. Why don't you speak up for yourself, dude? Yeah. <laughs> and Sorry. then this is when, yeah, this is when Missy says, "I haven't heard you say that you love him." And then Laura decides not to get married. Yeah, which is probably a good thing because she probably smelled like a horse. They went on a on a ride. Oh yeah, and I was like, why would you go on a ride right before your wedding? You're gonna smell like a horse. That's true. That's I almost funny. forgot that. I wrote that in my notes. <laughs> Look at that. She's gonna smell like a horse. Yeah, but uh, it, it is surprising that so little would convince her uh, to leave this guy at the altar like um, she's she only dating him because her parents approved of it but i wish we but, had more time with this character to develop it a little bit more but even if that's the reason you think that all of this time she would have kind of that that's the reason and she don't like to be dissuade from doing it so easily from just like this little comment is kind of kind of crazy it is but also we need conflict so we've <laughs> got to make it as simple as possible because we're running at a time sure 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 uh so and 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 i guess to be fair missy is as surprised as anybody like what oh, sure that little like, thing that i said like made you change your mind so uh <laughs> so that makes sense yeah i don't know and the the mom grace is being really really difficult all the seats have to be exactly 33 inches apart that was so funny <laughs> she's like yes it was in the email yeah and the guys are like uh okay (laughs) yeah and so we get this whole conversation between gus and cash and he's like sorry for the broken wrist (laughs) see i actually like this conversation because Uh i think it would have been better if they ended up being not super friends but ended up having some kind of respect for each other because it would have made the triangle at least a little bit more interesting on that end yeah and he's like 
I was left at the altar. I don't like weddings. And I was like, why is this coming up now? Why do we only have like a minute to process this? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and I don't feel like that would, that experience would make him lash out the way that he did. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I just thought there was kind of a bro moment. It was kind of funny. Yeah. So no, I, I liked wrist. it. I, you know, I liked it. Like, I, I wish that they would have like, I don't want Missy to be with this guy, but I like him. I wish he could have gotten some kind of like tension at first, but yeah, you know, like, oh, he's not so bad. Well, and so then Val fixes the wedding dress. She's Emily, an amazing tailor. We didn't amazing. know this about her. She's had a lot of lives to live, I guess. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> I'm like, that's no way that could fix it with all like the beating and the other, you know, supposedly this thing. No took, way. Like, two like, months oh, for little people scene. by hand. She looked like, that was another thing too. When they're in that dirty ass, oh, I'm sorry. When they're in that dirty place. Yeah. She's cutting with like big, they're not yeah. even fabric scissors and she's <laughs> cutting that up. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like, why do you got to cut this dress? But she's a miracle worker. I mean, it's impressive. Yeah. Um, and so then we get this whole thing with the, uh, with Grace accusing Missy of ruining everything with the wedding. Boy. And, and then Missy says to Gus, you let me be me. And then Gus is so mad at her because of this accusation that his mother's made that he, she ruined the wedding. I'm going to need some space. Oh, how dare they <laughs> like, this to no, Gus? Gus, you're her favorite. What are you doing? I know. It was so funny because earlier on, like when Gus is telling the story of when he left, got left at the altar to chase, I, I was like, I was like, oh no, who would leave my baby at the altar? And then this, and I was like, that's why you got left because mommy and daddy get mad and I got to get mad too. I was like, where did this come from? And then he's like, cause you have commitment issues. I was like, excuse me, what mm -hmm. commitment issues does she have? I mean, her husband died. That's it. Yeah, that's right. I mean, she oh, made I'm the so big sorry. commitment. I I'm so sorry that I can't rush into this relationship with you. You know, my husband's only been dead for a year. I got to go slow. We find yeah. myself again those were the big issues like he couldn't handle it well and she had nothing to do with laura's decision it's not her fault that she's not in love with her this... the laura's not in love with her fiance like it's just it's just very frustrating i mean this... i need some this space what kind of... like she's like against marriage or something when you're right she it... married she was married you know, what is going on i had a pause and i had to get up for a moment i was like no <laughs> no yeah. But like I said earlier, I just think it's to get the audience to be annoyed by Gus because he's been so good. Yeah. Like a pretty decent yeah. guy up until yeah. now. True. Yes. And and then this is when we get uh Grace recognizing Valeria as the volunteer in the in in Houston right. in the hospital. And then we get this whole flashback. And I'm really confused about how the show wants us to view Austin me too it's confusing like this scene when he says that austin says i'm doing this for the family and then uh, cash says, you don't even see her she's just a prize for you you don't love her the way that she deserves to be loved i took that too as like you don't love her like i could love her basically mm -hmm. in that scene. oh yeah because in the earlier this season i think it was Oh, it might be episode two or three when he had that flashback when he's when he told when uh austin told chase he was going to ask her to marry her he's like i love her and he was genuine in saying that i love her but i don't i especially with the next episode it seems yeah. like austin is kind of more jerky than not but i don't think it i don't know it's confusing I, again i think they're showing like this great love that Missy had for Austin, allegedly, because we don't see it. She chose wrong. She always should have chose Chase yeah. because I don't know why. I still don't know why. Well, and it's just a little bit confusing. Is Austin with Missy to, to get back or be mean as retribution in some way for Cash? Like, is the, is the reason he's with Missy is because he knows that Cash is in love with Missy? Or is he genuinely interested in her on his own like 
it's it's just i i just don't know how villainous they want us to view austin is he because obviously he there was all these debts and there was you know he made this risk and he died and everything like that and usually that kind of character would be like a very sympathetic like almost angelic kind of character um so it's unusual that they would have so much negativity about him like for instance if you're looking at heartland like at the beginning of the series amy's mother dies and um she's she's there's almost no negativity in 16 seasons about her character like she is just like the best mother the best you know like so it's, it's really unusual i think in a show like this to have such right. a complicated dead character well, right from the beginning, from the first episode, we knew he was going to be complicated because of what he asked uh, Val to, you know, only you can mm-hmm. help or whatever. And yeah. that was the whole mystery. But I, you're right. Is it, Did he start dating Missy because he knew Cash was in, into her and he wanted to mess with Cash and then he developed real feelings for her? I don't know. There's just not enough yeah i don't know either it's interesting i understand Uh, why they don't want to put that many flashbacks with austin or anything like that because they're uh trying to move forward from that but there just there needs to be more i need to yeah we need to know more about his character um so then we get a cute scene between cody and isabel and he asks her to be the plus one to eat the leftovers oh the wedding that's That's my kind of guy yeah it's my kind of (laughs) guy yes (laughs) Yeah, of course, eat those leftovers. They're going to go to waste. I don't know if you remember that episode in Downton Abbey where mm-hmm. uh, Edith got left at the altar and they were like, yes. what are we going to do with all this food? And Violet's like, well, you know, give it to the poor, but send what it, whatever's left over over here to my place. And I was like, yeah. that's what I would do. Yeah. That's exactly what I would do. It was like, of course, <laughs> enjoy that food. I remember my sister's wedding because we made a lot of the food for my sister's wedding and we had so much leftover of I mean, because they had good tenants and everything, but it was really, really hot. And so I, I just don't think people were that hungry. Yeah, It was like a hot June day. And uh, and so we had, I particularly, remember we had this curry chicken salad. <laughs> we had like trays and trays of it. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the good folks at Baker Publishing Group. If you are looking for the perfect romantic read this summer, we have the perfect solution. Not only are each of these five books fantastic, but we have interviewed all of these authors on the podcast, which will allow you to have a totally immersive experience with each of these stories. Here's some suggestions. First, Second Time Around by Melody Carlson. An empty nester, Mallory Farrell inherits a rundown tourist shop. She never expects to rediscover her love for the funky coastal Oregon town or her now widowed teenage crush. With his help, she may just be able to renovate the shabby shop and her lackluster love life. Number two, Windswept Way by Irene Hannon. Buying a supposedly haunted house wasn't in Ashley Scott's plans, but when an intriguing opportunity drops into her lap, she's ready to launch a new life, but she can't do it alone, and her reclusive new neighbor, Jonathan Gray, may be just the person to help, if only there were room in his life for romance. Number three, The Words We Lost by Nicole Deese. Three friends, two broken promises, one missing manuscript. Book lovers and contemporary romance readers don't miss this new book from Nicole Deese. In The Words We Lost, editor Ingrid Erickson is given a sealed envelope from her late best friend by the man who shattered her belief in happily ever afters and then sent on a hunt for a hidden manuscript that may finally lead to the healing she's been searching for. Number four, In This Moment by Gabrielle Meyer. Calling all fans of Outlander and time travel romance, new from Gabriel Meyer comes a dramatic time-crossing tale set in three separate timelines. Maggie inherited a gift from her parents that allows her to live in 1861, 1941, and 2001. Each night, she goes to sleep in one time period and wakes up in another. She faces a difficult journey to discover her true self while drawn to three worthy gentlemen before she must choose one life to keep and the rest to lose. And finally, The Heart's Choice by Tracy Peterson and Kimberly Woodhouse. Rebecca McCutcheon is the first female court reporter in Montana. During a murder trial she's covering, she's convinced that the defendant is innocent, but no one but the handsome 
awesome new Carnegie librarian, Mark Andrews, will listen to her. In a race against time, will they be able to find the evidence to free the man before it's too late? For any of these great books and more, go to bakerbookhouse.com today. That's bakerbookhouse.com or use our Amazon affiliate link in the description. So yeah, that's living. That's the good life. <laughs> yeah, because it, it's, well, you spend all that money. You should enjoy that food. Well, I mean, yeah. I feel like most of the times, because I have I have to say, I have never heard of this actually happening in real life of people being left at the altar like this. Like I've heard of engagements being broken off, but in real life, I have never heard of this actually happening, but it's in, you think it would happen like every day, how often it happens in the movies and on television. Right. But every, most of the time when it is depicted on television, they just still go ahead with the party. Yeah. Because there's know? been stories about that. People have written articles that people have gone on with the party and stuff. Yeah. And I think there was an episode of Bridezilla that this happened on. Oh, really? Oh yeah, I can't. I'm trying to. Yes. I mean, she was like a Bridezilla, but like, and her family did not help either. I, I felt bad for this lady because they hated this guy, like their stepdad. And they came the day of the wedding. He didn't show up. Oh. And they went on with the party and she's in her wedding dress looking all sad. And the daughters are like all happy, but they did get married off camera. Like they, they just went on a honeymoon together and got married. Oh, I was like, did? that's what she should have. Yeah. Cause there's like, I just remember it popped up, you know, at the end, like they got married anyway, but that's the only time I'm trying to think if I've ever known that. I think my mother did knew somebody who left somebody at the altar, but I've personally never known anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, that, I, um, I never have either. Uh, so then we have this scene between Val and Cash and, and Val says, we have this spark between us. And he's like, yeah, there's a spark. And then Cash says, friends forever. I and was, Val, uh, Val says, I, I, uh, I think you need to be honest with yourself in your heart. There's only one person. And if you're not kissing her, it's not going to feel right. So Riles me up. <laughs> yeah, which was very annoying because he admits that there's a spark between why did he kiss Val? Um, and I guess again, like we've said over and over that it's just all so one-sided Yeah, that, that we, okay. okay, We know that he loves Missy, but we, again, we've got nothing from Missy's side. And so it just feels kind of weird. It's hard to get invested in him wanting her without the other side being shown. Right. And I was wondering, because when she said there's a spark between us and he goes, yeah, yeah. And then eventually he's the one who says we can still be friends. I was like, she was hoping that he went, maybe we can try or something. Yeah. But like, oh, I wish they oh. had, I think that would have been more interesting. I wish they would have, it, it would have, yeah. Like it would have just added to this. I don't know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just don't see it. So then you have Al crying and uh, and then she, she is crying to tough and she, tough says your family and and uh, then uh isabel is talking to missy and she says we had me and cody had wedding food together <laughs> <laughs> and missy says she I doesn't just, know if it's a date or not yeah and 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 we should talk about that for just a second because i right. don't know what it is about people that they're so hesitant to call something a date like for me, I'm like, if I've spent, if we've scheduled, I guess this wasn't scheduled, but if we're spending quality time together, <laughs> I think it's, it's, it's a date. Like, why do we have this, like, I don't right. this very high standard of like, what is considered a date that it has to be like this scheduled thing. That's the specific, we both know we're going on a date. Like, I just think time spent together with somebody of the opposite sex where there's like, where there's a potential connection, right? Like obviously right. if it's not a date, if like one of the people is gay or something like that, like that's not a date, but like if it's time spent with a person of the opposite sex or same sex, depending on how you roll and then it's a date. <laughs> yeah. And he asked her to go to the dinner and gave him his arms. I mean, she would, of course, I would go, I would eat with him too. He's a man of jack of all trades. He's yeah. arranging flowers. Like he's doing like, all the flower arrangements. Again, I, they couldn't I, hire a florist. I just feel like I see that all the time, even with my friends. And so, oh, it wasn't a date. I'm like, yes, it was. It was a date. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a serious date. Yes. Yeah. You know, but it's yeah. still a date. Right. Um, and so Missy says, I just want someone to wake up to. 
And then we get Val coming in saying, I have, I have a secret to tell. Right. And so we'll talk about the next episode. So what would you give this episode one to 10? I'm going to give it a seven because I enjoyed it up until all that relationship drama, but for the most part, it was fun. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, I'd give it like a seven. Yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Uh, so then episode nine, Truth Laid Bare, and then... Valeria finally reveals the secrets of her past and the truth of Austin's secrets surface, causing Cash to spiral into a dark and dangerous place. So overall, what did you think of this episode? A lot. A lot came out in this episode. <laughs> there was a, it was a busy episode. I liked it. I, I feel like almost all these episodes should have been like this one, almost. Mm -hmm. I also don't know, I forgot to mention this, how much time has passed because now they're wearing winter coats. So oh, that's a good point. I don't know. And there was snow. So I don't know how much time has elapsed in the series. But yeah. You mean between both these episodes? Because the end of the episode if it is a cliffhanger on episode eight. No, not between both nine. these episodes, but just in the series as a whole. I'm wondering mm. how long it's been. Yeah. You know, how that's long the question. season is. Yeah. Uh, so then we get the whole story that Val is part of this super rich family uh, and a uh, hotel, it's like a hotel heiress, uh, the Chavez Ooh. family, and that her mother died uh, Her and her mother was named Valeria. She was named Estella. No, I and... think that was her mother's middle name. Which one? Valeria was her mother's middle name. Oh, middle name. Okay, yeah. middle name. Yeah, her mother's is, is her mother's name. But uh, and then uh, her oh, dad. Wait. Was it her middle name? Oh, I'm I wrote sorry. down V's mom's real name is Valeria. So. It might have been. She might have said it was my middle name. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I confused that. I confused that all up. I apologize. <laughs> okay. But uh, anyway, it's uh, it's her, not her birth first name. Yeah. <laughs> That's the important part. Yes. Okay. And then, uh, and so then her dad gets remarried six months later. They're wow. going to send her to reform school. I mean, it was a lot. A wow, lot. though. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if she's got any siblings. That's true. That's a good question. You I don't know? think we saw any of that. I mean, you would think, uh, you would think that perhaps she does have siblings mm -hmm. because if she's the sole beneficiary to her father, uh, unless he leaves everything yeah. to his wife, but I think she can make a claim of it because she is his biological daughter. But there's I'm a lot assuming, of things. That, yeah, there's a lot of things that you just have to go with. Yeah, you have to story. go with. Uh, I don't know if money on her part plays. She seems to be not a person who cares much for money uh, in that worldly life, you know. So yeah. I don't. Her well, father I mean, appears to be. Yeah, that you know, in the day of social media, in the day of like, evidently, none of the McMurray's Google none I, of them like you he know, has but, to know where she is. yeah that's I mean, maybe that austin does he seems oh, to be the only one who's figured oh, it out when we get to that flashback though <laughs> that look <laughs> so you have to accept that that none of them look into her past they just accept everything of what she's saying that she's you know and she could be killing them while they're sleeping yeah yeah so you have to accept that you also have to accept the fact that she can go back into the house and that well, none that of the codes ridiculous. are changed none of the keys are changed the safe is exactly the same as what it was that makes that was no sense so ridiculous <laughs> I, I was like what yeah it, and she's wearing the same clothes how long did it take her to drive like <laughs> you know I, yeah what? 
Well, and then also there is absolutely no way that a pawn dealer would, would accept a pawn for something they know is a stolen item. No that way. Would, yeah. You, you, well, because you, you would never do that because you would lose all the, like the police will come and take the item is stolen. You lose all of your investment in that. And, and yeah. I mean, it is like the whole idea of like pawn, pawn stores well, being these like sort of villains. That's something that you've seen. It's almost like an old West kind of thing. It's like the, the pawn. The Cause pawn it feels store. so bad to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there is absolutely no way that he would take that necklace well it depends that it was stolen it depends because there are certain uh places uh, that are pawn shops around here you could go and uh fence some stolen stuff because you know they know what you know they that's all a side business but no legitimately there's no way i mean let's just say that at least it would be extremely risky to do so because yeah if the police find out about it and it, there's an official documented stolen record of it. So if the police were to find out about it, they'd take it to him and they're not, it, it, he would get absolutely no compensation at all. Absolutely. That's why he says he's not cutting it up either. When she says, cut it up. This was mm-hmm. the stupidest thing to, to steal. Wasn't there like money or something in that safe that yeah. she could have stolen? Like not jewels. It would have been. Yeah, I agree. It would have been too hard to, yeah, well. <laughs> and also like a Makes ruby sense. necklace i don't feel like that's that that expensive anyway i don't know like Maybe it's not, not like diamonds and stuff i guess you're right yeah but, but i i don't know it, it but, was but foolish. literally the police could come and say that is declared that's a, a stolen item they take it from him and he gets zero compensation absolutely for that and so and he'd have to give up who gave it to him yeah and he's a you know, uh, what do you call that? Guilty by association. So whatever money he gave Valeria. Oh, he he'd would be, be out. He, yeah. He would be out. Um, so, I mean, cause I, I know from all of my great experience of watching Pawn Stars <laughs> on History Channel, but they have to be super careful about buying stolen items because if they were to buy something that they think is legit and then it turns out on a stolen items list, that's it. They're screwed. Yeah. Well, cause I've pawned stuff before. Mm-hmm. Um, not often, but like, oh, it's it's a terrible experience, but sometimes you got to do it. But yeah. like, you do have that grace period where if you get the money back again, and some mm-hmm. people do that for a short-term thing for, you know, because they need the cash. Yeah. But uh, yeah, they're very s- specific with what they take. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't, that's, you wouldn't go to a pawn shop for a necklace like that. You would, you would have to go to a jeweler. Mm-hmm. A jeweler might buy it secondhand to sell themselves. I, you know, of course you might need paperwork for that. So I don't know. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, Daniel says that he's not going to pay for the wedding. He said it was in the contract that if any, uh, if anybody called off the, or caused the wedding to be called off, then they wouldn't have to pay. And, uh, and so everything is just a mess. Ridiculous. <laughs> I would sue him. I would sue him. I'm not paying. He's throwing a tantrum. Mm-hmm. You know, like my business was ruined. My business meeting was ruined. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. And then there there was this whole scene with uh with Tug, Tuff and Val about him asking her to be the foreman. And she's she's kind of unsure about it. Yeah, it's for her to take soul. Uh, for mm-hmm. her to run the place solely while he's having yeah, a good he's time. in Arizona. Yeah. Like living life, you know, having a good time. <laughs> yeah. And she's just so conflicted about all her truths coming up uh, of her past and, and stuff with Austin that we're going to find out mm-hmm. in a little bit in the episode. Yeah. So then Austin, we find out Austin cheated on hurricane when we, we kind of known that, but it's reiterated. And then there's this message that Valeria has still right it's hilarious no it's it's or chase it's who has it it's um oh, chase it's cash cash Why am i calling Sorry. him chase i think i was calling him chase earlier before oh we're gonna hear about that i think i called him chase earlier before and didn't realize it it's cash. Not experts Uh-oh. oh no oh we're really gonna hear about that oh no i just realized people I think write going... nice reviews on us please oh no i just realized i think i was calling him chase oh my it's gosh. easy to do but uh, anyway, so Oops. yeah, there's a message. There's an answer machine message 
and uh, and they hear the pawn shop bell in the message. And uh, then uh, and Austin says, I could use some help. And then this is when Missy goes to pawn the ring and finds out the, the necklace is in there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it just, it's, it's, uh, and this is why, so Cash didn't call Austin back after that message. Um, and, um, and then uh, yeah. Val pawned the stolen necklace from her family for Tucker. And that's a, that was, here's another thing. Like at one moment, Austin seems very vulnerable reaching out for help. In another moment, he seems, that was such a terrible thing to ask of Val. Mm -hmm. He says, you are the only one I know that can fix this. He says, I know about Estella. I know about your past. And it seems a little bit unlikely that she would be able to fix it when she is literally as a teenager has left her family. Like yeah, she's the a idea runaway. that she would have the access to any of this would it's be very ridi- unlikely. It's, it's very unlikely. She was a runaway and it's a terrible thing to ask of someone to be like, yeah, you got to do this because you know, our family's in trouble. Oh, that's a terrible thing to ask somebody, mm-hmm. even if he knew. Yeah. And then you get this whole conversation between tough and cash. And he says, I am the only brother, let's see, um, I, I am the only brother left and we don't talk to each other. And then he says, the reason you didn't call him back was Missy. That's why you left in the first place. And then this is out of the three of us, he was the charmed one. Nobody wanted to believe he could be in trouble. Uh, and so, yeah, that was pretty intense scene. He seems, uh, Tuff seems to be the only one who's cool. Uh, in his position in the family he has yeah. no beef with any of his brothers this seems a lot of well he's mad at cash well yeah cash cared he's more the, about this supposed thing with missy than about his brother but he's right on that there is a little bit of truth in that yeah there's some, there's some truth in that yeah he was on a mission he probably couldn't help or couldn't get back to him right away mm-hmm. but actually no because he does he show says- up in the pilot so he, he could have says, had time to call him. He even says the whole reason that you joined the army at all oh, was yeah. because of Missy. Oh, which is true. <laughs> I apologize for that. But yeah. oh man, like I don't. <sighs> so then uh, Tucker says we're still in the red. And, and then we get the scene with Austin introducing Val to Isabel. And, and then Austin says, I know your secret Estella. And she's, he says, I bet way too much on reds. I wouldn't ask you if it wasn't important. Don't do it for me. Do it for them. So yeah. again, terrible thing to ask somebody. Yeah. Just again, he looks more like he's obviously desperate, mm-hmm. but he looks more villainish. Yeah, he does. With this request, like this poor girl, like. You know, she obviously still had keys to the house that worked, but yeah. And so he had been betting on a horse. Is that what Reds is? I'm not, I'm unsure about that. I don't know. I mean, was he betting? It was hard for me to understand. I was listening and it said, I thought he said, I bet way too much on Reds, but I could have misheard. It was, he bet too much on something. I was wondering if he was like betting on himself, like if he won it, like, Kind of that's a, a little bit. Uh, well, and that's why he would have to. Yeah, because you're not supposed horse. to bet on yourself or like uh, or on your team that you're on. But people get caught, get in trouble for doing that, you know, for sort of it's kind of like rigging the bets and stuff. But I don't know. I really I, I'm unsure about I'm, I have no clue on in that area. So then we find out that Val's dad saw her and then he declared he reported the necklace stolen. And uh, then the they pawned the necklace to pay off the debts uh, for for Austin. Um, and I forgot to paid off at least some. Of, see, uh, okay, so she paid off that debt for Austin, obviously after he died, because she left to go get that necklace the night that he died. She was not there when he when he fell yeah. off the bull and uh, or the bull tossed him. Uh, and he died so she must have come back 
before she left for good and paid them and yeah. and continued to pay. See, then again, she's assuming this man's debt. This is a lot to ask for somebody. It really is, especially for someone so young as she is. I know. And then, uh, and then Missy's mom says to her, says, you've given everything to the McMurray's. And you're juggling everyone else's needs but your own. It, she, Mama's right. Yeah. And Mama might have something with Hank going on. So, um, oh, I didn't. Kudos see that. to her. Well, remember she was like Hank. Hank, really? When they go to the to the coffee shop and they're sitting together, uh-huh. and she goes, Hank. Oh, we're just friends. But I was like, well, Hank's got options. You know, <laughs> I missed that. <laughs> uh, and then it says that. So Tucker, Tucker threatens the family and this is Austin died. I felt like I failed him. And then, so Missy talks to Grace and, and says, I just listened to your daughter. I did not cause this. And so they, Daniel uh, is still insisting about calling it Booker stadium. So then we get the scene between Hank and Isabel. And he says, we've had enough of Daniel Booker. I'm out. So they're done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that ends that. I feel like most of the time, these kind of stadiums get like quite a bit of public funding. Like from the, from the, it would get some funding, at least from the town, from the city. But maybe they do things different. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the, the you would think that the city would get money actually for, allowing that stadium to be in their city they would actually be making money off of that well i think that's why the the states or the governments invest in stadiums is because right. then they can i don't know get money off of it um i don't know but uh then uh grace says that that they'll pay for the wedding and then you get the scene with cash threatening tucker and then uh and then Cash gets arrested at the end. Oh, that's another thing. Cash. Let me not call him Chase. Cash. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. I, anyway, uh, Cash was that. He's kind of a hothead. We know this, but yeah. he's got. He's riding. He's riding that very night, and he decides, I got to do this right now, not <laughs> afterwards, not after the ride. I got to do this right this minute. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and there's, again, Tucker would never do that because as soon as they find out this is a stolen necklace, it's going to be. Well, he's also like, in essence, he kind of, it, it almost feels a little black male-ish uh-huh. in essence that way. But again, we don't know. It's still unclear exactly why Austin was in money trouble where he had upon his father's uh, belt buckle. Yeah. And um, that's gone. Too. Right. And, and doing all these bets with him and pulling the bull so he can make more money. We, we don't exactly know mm-hmm. why. If he had yeah. a gambling problem, uh, if he was trying to help somebody out, um, a gambling problem would make sense. Yeah. But well, he says that he bet too much. So, yeah, but there's he, some uh, kind of gambling problem. But Val ends up telling Isabel that he was betting on that. He was. He was betting too much in hopes of making money to pay back this debt. Mm -hmm. So he was gambling Mm -hmm. and losing and instead of gambling and winning to pay back all this money. So he's getting deeper in the hole. Yeah. Which the house always wins. (laughs) (laughs) I know that from. Oh, but we've got to talk about that gravestone though. Oh yeah. (laughs) There were no dates. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yeah, like he has his name, right? And it says Rest Rest Easy Cowboy, but mm-hmm. it doesn't have the year he was born or the year he died or anything. It's just his name on it. And I was like, huh, well, they don't want to, I guess they don't want to place this show in a certain time frame. But that mm. really made me laugh because they usually have dates yeah, on two that's stones. That's a, that's a good point. And I, I mean, it's terrible of me, but I was, that made me laugh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I would give this one probably also a seven, eight. I don't know. Like it, I'm I'm interested just because I want to see where it all ends up in the in the end of the season. Yeah. But uh, but 
there's a lot that you have to kind of like accept and you have to yeah. turn your brain off a little bit with some of these things. I might give uh, this, no, I'm going to give this episode seven and a half because okay. of uh, that flashback where Austin's wearing that baseball cap. And <laughs> I was like, are they supposed to look? And then, cause we don't know. He exactly. was trying, they were trying to make him look way young. Yeah. But I don't know if it was like nineties <laughs> young or is it supposed to be two thousands young? Cause there's no, you know, date given up, you know? So <laughs> to me, it looked like almost nineties young, but you know, mm-hmm. I was, it was, I was like, no, you can't do this. It was like the flashback where we first found out with Valeria that her name was Estelle. Estelle um, Stella, we first yeah. Found, yeah, Stella. And she had, she was like in the pigtails and uh, that braid, I'm sorry. And her dress with the rose. And I was like, wait, is she supposed to be like 15? You know, <laughs> and it's, so that, 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 get, that gets a half star all on its own, just for <laughs> trying to pull that off. Yeah, that was funny. (laughs) Well, let us know what you think. uh, If you're listening, what you think of these episodes, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And we'll talk more next episode with Jenny here with us in the final episode of the season. We'll talk a little bit about the show and why we think maybe it's not really um, uh, catching off the way that I think Hallmark hoped it would. Uh, So we'll talk a little bit about that. And next time and next week and it should be fun and uh, if you like what we're doing please leave your positive reviews <laughs> on itunes it really helps us a lot we're just a small podcast having fun as friends so we really appreciate those positive itunes reviews please yes and i'm so sorry for calling him chase <laughs> when his name is cash i'm <laughs> I know I did that more than once. Oh boy. I'm sorry, Rachel. You might get, you might get some words for that. I'm really sorry. No, uh, no apologies needed. Uh, so Terry, where can people follow you? <laughs> I'm at Twitter, probably still apologizing for this at uh, Flurry Heaven. Very good. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all over social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also make sure you're following us on social media, Homework is Pod and Homework is Podcast. And if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. And uh, we have the patron group, uh, which is so much fun. And this week we are having Rodrigo Massa on and we're on Thursday and we are going to be watching Merry Texmas, which I loved. And uh, and so that's going to be super fun to have someone like him on our little patron watch along. So please take a look at it. And and we appreciate it so much, all the patrons. And then we also have the merch store, which is a lot of fun. So thanks so much, everybody. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye. Bye.